News Radio 840 WHAS. Good Sunday morning, Bob Sekuler and the Louisville Real Estate Show. Here with you till the top of the hour. Thanks for joining us. I hope it's a good Sunday for you. With us for the show, and we've got a lot of great questions, by the way. With us is Chuck Crosby. He is the owner of the Crosby Law Offices. Not only does uh, Chuck do closings and do them well to get your loan closed, but he is also a an expert in the commissioner sales, foreclosure defense, wills, which are so important. He can help you with the wills and power of attorney and, and more. And you can reach Chuck directly at 499-6360. Also here, Randy Rocky, who is co-owner of Swan Financial. They do a phenomenal job of getting you pre-approved and to Chuck's closing table. So, and they give you expert service, which is something you don't find everywhere. You can reach Randy and... Um, and his team at 6450736 and my son Greg who actually just stepped out to let his dog go outdoors uh and who does our marketing and photography is here and if you're thinking about selling now or in the future or even buying you can call me and I'll come out we'll talk about the process of selling and buying and then go from there you can reach me at 3765483 or bobsellslouisville.com. That's bobsellslouisville.com. All right, let's go to the questions. And this one is for both Randy, Chuck, Greg, and myself. It's for all of us. I received a phone call from Glenn, and I'm getting a lot of calls lately, and I love talking to you on the phone, which helps us with questions. So feel free to reach me on my phone to ask. Glenn says he listens to the show. He has a real estate question about the home his son is trying to buy. Glenn says... The home that the son's buying is repossessed from a bank, I believe. The lender, uh, Randy, this is where you come in. The lender appraiser wants a number of repairs done before the lender will approve the loan. Uh, the bank uh, won't make repairs. Glenn and his son have little money, so and this is not a VA or FHA loan. So Glenn is very concerned, rightly, about laying out money before the closing and it seems like a catch-22. So, Randy, let's start with you. Let's get your thoughts. What What do you suggest here? Because I could see if this was FHA, VA. We've dealt with this type of problem before. What are your thoughts on why would this be an appraisal concern? Right. So, if, if you know, the, the appraiser is going to tell you if there's things wrong that won't make, won't make it habitable or things that need to be repaired. So, a lot of times we can do a construction loan with it, uh, you know, at, at closing. We can't do that. If it's five, ten thousand dollars, it's pretty easy. You get into more thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, it's it's a lot more paperwork and a lot more things you have to do. It sounds like there's some pretty major repairs, is is my guess. And and that's where I would go deeper because you know, even in even in new construction, you can have a brand new home and there's certain things missing. And if the appraiser goes in and those things aren't done that are specific living standards, maybe a toilet or a refrigerator or a stove, things of that nature. The bank's not going to loan you, correct, Randy? I mean, they're just going to yes. say, no, you need these things in. And if they're not there, then you can't buy the house. And either the seller needs to get them in the house, the builder needs to get them in the house, whoever, uh, but they need to be paid for before a bank will give you money to purchase that house. Remember, this is a repoed uh, property. Uh, that's so then, then, okay, so it's repo. So that's yes. that's exactly probably bank's what's going on. Probably, yeah. yeah, there's nobody, yeah. Right. Now. Yeah. So we can do construction loans on a repo and, and, it, you know, and, and to Greg's point, it might be some, that there's probably things that are not functional. Uh, so we'd have to go in and get estimates by a contractor, put it in escrow and then have them have draws after closing. So we would close on the house and then have draws after closing. Yeah. And so the question uh, from my memory in talking with Glenn, the, the worst part that I can remember is one of the rooms uh, missing carpeting, which, yeah. That yeah. that could I I can see, but the mm -hmm. other items were minimal in my mind. Chuck, any thoughts on why an appraiser gets that deep into the weeds on this? Well, he, he, I can never tell you what any appraiser will care about on any given day. Mm. Uh, like I said, I've seen some appraisers come back saying the house has ghosts. I mean, you just never know uh, what's going to happen. But just from a legal perspective, you don't want to do pay the money that the seller should be taking care of prior to closing uh, 
Because mm-hmm. if it doesn't close, you're out the money. Now, as right. you pointed out on BAs and FHAs, oh, this could be a felony if you do it ahead of time. But uh, that's not the situation here. But I, I have seen uh, on these bank repos, commissioner sales, things like that. A lot of times, if you try and go to a conventional financing outfit, you're not going to be able to get it. Like when you buy a piece of property from a commissioner sale, the commissioner is not going to sign anything except a deed. That's all they're signing. No settlement statements, no nothing. It's more of a purchase than it is a purchase. Okay. <clears throat> so Wait, is that a that, new word you've just made up a purchase? Actually, it's not. It's been the oh. word used by the variety of banks uh, that do that kind of loan uh, for quite a while, but it's uh, kind of like a refinance purchase. So a purchase. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, there are banks that do that because that's what you run into with commissioner sales. Now, if it's a bank repo, either a deed and lieu or more likely the bank bought it back through foreclosure. Um, that mm-hmm. you're you're still operating under basically the same rules. Now I'm sure Randy has the product. Um, I know a variety of banks that have um, a construction to perm type uh, product mm-hmm. where you know you get the place fixed up and then uh, once that's all done, then you've got it just rolls right into permanent financing. Or you can go to the banks the investors use when when buying properties out of a commissioner sale. But uh, um, I don't know why this appraiser has done it. I suspect because they're trying to do conventional financing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they see something major like there's no toilets in the place or, yeah. you know, something that would suggest it's not actually livable. or it Flooring flooring is absolutely one we run in. I mean, yeah. yes. you know, right. it's, it's an absolute. So, yeah. Glenn, what I, what I would tell you to do, if you're thinking about this and you want to move forward and this is a stalemate and it sounds like it is, I would tell you to call Randy and I'll give you out, give the phone number out a little bit. Uh, I would call him and discuss maybe moving it to Swan and letting them do a construction loan, which I think... My, my other question would be for something yeah. like that. Can you just throw some paint on the floor, on the subfloor? <laughs> <and laughs> there you go. Well, That's a great question. question. Yeah, but Bob, when you tell uh, uh, when you tell your fellow uh, you know to go, it's not just a construction loan. It's yeah. a it's a uh, construction to perm. So it's not like you have because with construction loans, uh, you know they have a certain period of time, and the interest rates are usually pretty harsh. Um, but when you do the construction to perm to permanent financing, uh, it really is just a one transaction, fairly smooth. Well, and right. also, Chuck, we can do that at closing and then put the money yeah. in escrow. Yeah, right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah. Glenn, I think yeah, you so have it's not path. just a construction loan. Yep. Yes. You got the path. We'll give you the number. Get a pencil and paper. By the way, if you want to see this show again or hear it again and, and see it at the same time, go to LouisvilleAnswers.com. That's LouisvilleAnswers.com. That's a redirect to our YouTube channel. All right. Chuck, Linda called me with a serious problem, uh, and I, I sent her over to you. You may have heard from her. Maybe she hasn't called you yet. She originally wanted to sell her home. And folks, this is so important. I I cannot, I really can't stress this enough. This question is so important for all people who are thinking about selling your home on your own. She originally wanted to sell her home, put it on some of the sites herself, like Zillow. A buyer agent contacted her with a buyer and then negotiated a price. Linda was unrepresented by at the time, by any sort of agent. She had received a medical diagnosis that originally made her think she wanted to sell her house, but after thinking things through, she decided, nah, I don't want to sell. And that's where the problems began. She had already entered into a contract with the buyer agent and the buyer. So, Chuck, I I don't know if Linda's reached out to you yet, or I'm using it. I couldn't confirm or deny whether she did or didn't. Very good. Well, you, you know, okay. So, what are the options for a seller like Linda who changes their mind, whether they're represented or not represented, but more importantly, because Linda was not represented, what options are there on a contract? And then we'll follow up to what could happen for Linda. Understand. Um, when you keep saying that they were unrepresented, that that isn't as big uh, an issue as it may sound. Okay. Um, she was given the opportunity to sign a contract. She was given the opportunity uh, to 
look at it, have it reviewed, that sort of thing. Nobody just is forced to sign it. Well, I can't say nobody is. Uh, this is Kentucky after all. Um, but <laughs> most people are given an opportunity before they sign to have something looked at. So if you just go ahead and sign it, it falls under that whole you knew or should have known that you should have had somebody look at it. So unless there's serious issues going on and, uh, you know, guns being involved and that sort of thing, that that's not really anything that that you, you have to think about too much. Um, but with that said, I get the call regularly um, about, hey, I just signed a contract. How do I get out of it? Okay. If you're the seller, uh, as uh, our question in this case, if you're the seller, well, clearly the first thing that happens is you're going to get a letter from some attorney or somebody saying that uh, there's three things that can happen. One, um, you know, uh, you can, uh, we can sue you for specific performance. Specific performance is saying, hey, you don't want to do this. Well, we're going to make you do this. You sign the contract. We're going to go after you. Now, in a commercial deal, that's, that's a viable alternative. On a residential, I really don't know of any cases in the last hundred years where that's actually happened. Uh, you know, uh, it, it just isn't likely to happen. Well, if that doesn't happen, then uh, you're going to go to the alternative of, okay, what about damages? Uh, if you don't sell the house to these people, well, now we have a set item at a set price. They go out and buy a like item, but it's more money. Well, then the damages are the difference between what they were going to pay for yours and what they paid on the new place. Mm -hmm. Now, they can't go buy a place with gold-plated toilets and, right. and use that. It has to be similar. Now, those are real damages that they can come after uh, if you just pull the plug on it with no uh, legal justification. And then finally, you're going to have the realtors uh, who have provided a willing, able, and ready uh, buyer, mm -hmm. and they're going to want their commission because they earn the commission when the contract is signed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so those are the damages that are out there. Now, in a case like this, if there's medical issues involved, well, you know, maybe that gives you a little toehold that, you know, there's a certain impossibility, but I really wouldn't put a whole lot of weight on that argument. Um, the best alternative in a case like this, in my mind, is talk to the buyers and say, hey, um, I, I can't do this now. Um, it's just not feasible, you know, please let me out. Here's, you know, here's your good faith deposit back. At that point, I think there'd be a realtor in the background going, hey, wait a minute, I want my commission. Yeah, right. uh, so that might be another part of the negotiation. But I'm wondering about the ethical uh, uh, position of a realtor who tells their client not to sign a release, even though they want to, just so that they can grab the commission on yeah, that. That's not, uh, I hear yeah, you. That, that's absolutely wrong. Right. Yeah, that that would not be something All in right. my mind I would agree with. All right. And and my point, though, with this would be, for example, when I'm meeting with a seller, I want to do a litmus test and find out things about how, if they've thought this through, and mm -hmm. if there's a medical issue, what happens? And then where will they move once it sells? Because if you don't have a place to move, it's not just so simple just to simply put the house on the market, sell it, and then move somewhere if you don't have a yeah, place I, to go. I get that. Yeah. I'm not saying that there's not um, an issue involved. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that, is that really a legal justification? If yeah. my diagnosis is, oh, shoot, I have diabetes, well, you know, that's not really anything here. If my le if my medical diagnosis is, hey, I've got three months to live and, yeah. you know, you've got to be bedridden every second of that time. Well, that, that may be another issue. And right. there's always workarounds. Okay. So you can't leave in this time frame. Maybe we can extend that. But the fact of the matter is uh, signing that contract, unless there's some sort of legal justification to nullify that things like you didn't know what was in it there's no meeting of the minds uh there was duress uh there's Explosion. mental incapacity yeah a lot of those things just don't exist in the i'd say almost weekly phone calls i get from sellers who just don't want to close and the thing that i always point out is okay so you don't want to close how badly do you not want to close? Because these are the damages that you're likely to look at. Mm 
X amount out of out of commission and a possibility that sometime in the future, uh, the buyer will come back and say, hey, I was going to buy your house for 100. I could only find a house similar to that. That's 120. Well, there's 20 in damages right there. Right. Um, so we will. It's a sad on. situation. Linda, I hope uh, this helps you a little bit. And um and uh, we'll continue following up on this if you want, but to keep uh, up to date on this. A reminder that uh, we're going to take a break in a minute, and when we come back, cleaning mistakes that are actually making your home dirtier. If you want to see what the sellers are actually uh, saying about us, you can look at our reviews. We're very proud of our reviews. You can go to louisvillezillow.com or louisvillegoogle.com. With us here, with us on the air in our Zoom configuration, Randy Rocky who is a co-owner of Swan Financial. You can reach Randy, 645-0736. Also, Chuck Crosby, he owns the Crosby Law Offices, 499-6360. My son, Greg, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more. And you can reach me if you're thinking of selling now or in the future. Love to be able to help you and at least talk. It's free, no obligation. You can call me, 376-5483. You can pick my brain again. doesn't cost you anything. 376-5483. Or go to Bob sells Louisville.com. We're back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHAS, Bob Sikoler, the Louisville Real Estate Show, here with you till the top of the hour. With us continuing, Chuck Crosby. He's the owner of the Crosby Law Offices. They do a great job of getting your loan closed. You can pick the closing attorney you want, and Chuck is a great guy, and he will get it done for you. 499-6360. Also, in that same vein, Randy Rocky, Swan Financial, great group to get a mortgage through. You can reach Randy anytime, 6450736. My son Greg continues with us, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more. And you can reach me, Bob Sokola, anytime to help you sell your home or if you need to buy a home, we can help you. You can reach me on my cell phone, 3765483, or go to Bob Sells Louisville.com. We'll be spending more time indoors in the near future. And maybe already we are. And that may mean you want to keep the house clean. But there are some things that may actually make your house dirtier. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Mistake number one, you use the same rag around the house to clean things. Because let's face it, um, when it's dirty, it's dirty. So the new thing is to use a new paper towel or rag when you move from location to location. If you use a feather duster, well, guess what? It also traps, locks dust, but it also spills that dust out. You might want to think about using a microfiber cleaning cloth instead. Not cleaning the vacuum on a regular basis. It gets stuck, clogged up, and now you've got a real problem with the uh, stuff coming out from the uh, the exhaust. Tossing any kitchen tool into the dishwasher. It sounds like a great idea, but things like garlic presses, a zester, or a cheese grater have small nooks crannies that a dishwasher is not able to get and blast away skipping the sink you know do you clean your sink folks i do and it's important along with your garbage disposal which grows germs due to bacteria cleaning from the ground up you want to clean from the top down so that the whatever you're cleaning off of shelves and the like goes onto the ground um spraying the cleaner directly on a surface not as good as spraying it onto a cloth and then wiping directly because otherwise you have buildup of the spray of, let's say, wax of some sort, pledge on the furniture. And then not cleaning the washing machine. That's something I learned the hard way that we need to be cleaning the washing machine. There's some cleanser, cleansers that are out there that you could find commercially through Amazon uh, or go ahead and just do this a rinse cycle or clean cycle on many of the newer washers these days. Those are some of the things that you may be doing incorrectly in an attempt to try to clean your house. We go back to our questions. We're going to go to a speed round here for the most part. And we start with Chuck. Heather says in this email that she has been watching a lot of HGTV shows and she's considering buying a teeny house. Wondering, can she still qualify for a regular mortgage buying a teeny house? One of those small ones. Randy? Um, Yes, as long as we can get comps comparables in the area that will not be a problem so you have to find other teeny houses and if you can't what happens then then that's a problem uh it would be very difficult to do uh, a a teeny house tiny house whatever they call them Uh, it would be difficult to do if we do not have comparables within you know a 10 mile radius got it 
You want to sign up for our news, newest newsletter. The topic this week is pros and cons of buying with high rates, high interest rates. Go to welovelouisville.com. All right, so Chuck Crosby, the Crosby Law Offices, Janie uh, sends us this email. She's thinking about purchasing a home later this year and has heard the word contingency being used when her agent is reviewing contracts with her. She's wondering what are contingencies and what does she need to be aware of? And, Greg, if you want to pop in here as well, let's start with a home inspection contingency. Chuck, you want to start it off? Well, a contingency in general, and it'll relate to no matter what type of contingency, is that back door to get out, okay? Um, if you can't get financing, a financing contingency, can't get financing, you can pull the plug on the deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the home inspection uh, contingency, you have to do a home inspection. It has, you know, uh, and has to, uh, in, in when I see a home uh, uh, inspection contingency, uh, generally, it's going to be written that you have to approve uh, what uh, comes back on the report. Uh, anything along that line, any contingency of any kind is that back door. If it doesn't meet this particular criteria, the contingency kicks in and you can you can pull the plug. Yeah, I'll give Finance, you a inspections. I say, I'd like to buy the home, but I'd like to make sure I can pay for it. I'd like to make sure yeah. there's things that aren't broken. I'd like to make sure the big one that is 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 the, the kicker when you're in multiple offer situations is I'd like to buy your home, but I need to sell mine first. So it's contingent on mine selling first because all those other contingencies that you mentioned are very typical in the course of the contract home inspections and financing contingencies. And those usually get lifted pretty quickly and don't hold up a sale. But the one big guy in the room is that I got to sell my home first right. and somebody else has cash and somebody else doesn't need to sell their home first. And those are the things that are going to get you beat out when you're looking at comparable contingencies. Yeah, Randy, now, um, yeah good, good. Oh, I was going to say on, on commercial deals or if you're buying a commercial building, typically the contingencies will be uh, in the sole discretion of uh, the buyer and they'll have a particular period of time. So you could come back and say, yeah, I don't like the way the leaves fall on the front porch. I'm out of here. Yeah, due uh, diligence contingency. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all that kind of thing. Well, they but do soil tests. Uh, I mean, soil tests, kind of, environmental, yeah. the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah and they'll have like 90 days. In yeah, some states, in some cities, there's the sewer or drain, a sewer drain test yes. or a contingency. Yes. There's the appraisal contingency. Randy Rocky, one line on the appraisal contingency, you would say? Uh, if, it, if the value is not uh, correct, if it's lower than it should be, or they have repairs, they can get out of it with that contingency. And finally, the title contingency. Chuck Crosby on that one, title? Yeah, if there's a problem with the title, you don't have to buy the place. Now, uh, in all reality, there's a lot of different laws out there that, that would, would fit into this so that even if you didn't specifically say there was a title contingency, I, I don't think we could get the uh, court of equity, which Kentucky courts are, to say, no, you got to buy that house with those vicious liens on it hmm. uh, and that kind of thing. So, But uh, yeah, title contingency, title's got to be clean. It's got to be... And typically, it, is, it doesn't have to be pure as the driven snow. It has to be such as a uh, uh, title uh, insurance company like Stewart or First American or whatever would insure. Okay, because uh, there are things that we call clouds that, well, they look like they could be, you know, on paper a lien, but in fact aren't. We move on, and a reminder that if you want to see and hear what sellers are saying about our team, myself and my team, go to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. That's LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. Randy, Angela sent us this email with an unusual question. She's considering living off the grid. In other words, she would buy a house on a piece of property that would not be connected to electricity or water. And she's wondering, can you still get a mortgage for the property if the property is off the grid? No. The, really? Not that I know of. What's the reasoning behind that? Because uh, it's not a functioning house, and it, it's very difficult to find comps on a off the grid property. So mm-hmm. I've never, we've never done one in our company in the twenty years we've been in. Business. It probably goes to the same issue we talked about earlier in the show with you know conventional financing being given on properties yeah. that are non conventional and they don't have plumbing and they don't plumbing. have certain things yeah. and living off the grid or living in a, a VW bus that you outfit for uh, travel isn't something you're necessarily going to get a home mortgage on, but maybe yeah. a small business loan or a you know some sort of small. Uh, loan from a bank, but not a mortgage, correct? Now, I mean, yeah, and, and and for example, the Amish community, I'm looking at doing one of those now, but that's a little different situation because they, they have 
comps in the area because uh, the Lamish community usually has a bunch of, uh, you know, they usually are in a community. Yeah. So that's a totally different situation. Yeah, it's standardized. It's more, yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's more easily verifiable. And, yes. and what is it? The, what is the word, Bob? The propensity of homes? Or is there a very Propensity. Similar? That's my yes. favorite word. Yes. Propensity. We now, move. Yeah, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go, Chuck. I go was going to say, from my viewpoint, uh, the off when I think off the grid, I think of communities like Paulville, named after uh, Rand Paul, mm. uh, not Rand Paul, Ron Paul, uh, down in Texas, where they are not connected to anything or anybody. I can't imagine a resident of those communities applying for a loan mm. because that puts them back on the grid, per se. Mm. Right. All right. Moving on. And a reminder, if you'd like to uh, sign up for one of our free bi-monthly video updates, go to we sell Louisville TV. That's we sell Louisville TV. All right. Final uh, question here for Chuck. Christopher says he is considering buying a home, but it's apparently on the line of two different school districts. So that's kind of interesting, Chuck. And I've seen this before. And is it even possible? But it, apparently it is. He asked in an email, he says, how does one decide which school district that his kids need to go to. Is that even something that you can even address? Well, I've got six kids, and uh, there were instances when uh, we moved that, you know, you just don't have a choice. You go to that school district or you come up with a real – I think there was one year or uh, one time, and this is going back maybe 20 years, where, you know, we wrote a letter to try and get the school to allow us to whatever. They call it like the, the hardship transfer. Yeah, you, something like that. you're at school and you moved and you were close yeah. in the state and you were there for so long, and, yeah, you appeal to the board. Yeah, yeah you appeal to the board. Uh, if I remember correctly, that time it worked, um, but it was it's entirely up to them. Uh, but how do you choose which school? schools you go into well if you're if your home is on the line between two yeah. school districts yeah yeah so i think I mean, it's called school district is what yeah, I mean. yeah they're they're ultimately the ones that are going to make that choice for you and then you get to appeal it and they're still going to be the ones hearing the appeal sounds like fun we are out of time folks a reminder next week we're going to talk about something that might be of interest uh, to you how to make your home irresistible to buyers that's on next week's show our thanks to the folks here today randy rocky who is co-owner of swan financial you can reach out to randy to do a great job of getting you pre-approved and to the closing table and randy's number six four five zero seven three six also my uh, thanks to chuck crosby who's owner of the crosby law offices and he will get you closed so randy sets you up and randy does a great job chuck does a great job getting you closed but he also does a variety of other things like uh, judgments and force, uh, forcible detainers, appeals um, from that, also wills, power of attorney. You can uh, reach Chuck anytime, 499-6360. My thanks to my son, Greg, who does our marketing and photography and so much more. And you can reach me, Bob Sokolder, if you're thinking of selling or buying. We can help you in any case. And you can call me uh, free, no obligation to come out and talk and review what the process is. You can reach me at 376-5483 or fill out a form at bobsellslouisville.com. We're out of time for this Sunday. See you next Sunday on News Radio 840 WHAS.